Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Dorr, Research Fellow with RethinkX, and I'm going to be talking about the disruption of energy that we face in the 2020s. We are on the cusp of the most profound disruption of the energy sector in over a century, and like others, this one is the result of a convergence of several key technologies, specifically solar photovoltaics, wind power, and battery energy storage. The cost and capabilities of each of these three technologies have been improving relentlessly for several decades. Just since 2010, solar has fallen in cost by 80%, and by 2030 it will be 70% cheaper than it is today. Wind cost improvements are also impressive, 45% since 2010 and another 40% by 2030. Lithium-ion batteries even more so, 90% just since 2010, and another 80% by 2030. Now the consistency is easier to see when the same data are viewed on a logarithmic chart, and it's precisely this consistency that makes these trends so predictable. Solar and wind by themselves are now the cheapest way to generate electricity. And these are just global averages. The cheapest solar power in the United States, out west in California, is now less than two cents per kilowatt hour. And the cheapest solar combined with four hours of batteries is less than four cents per kilowatt hour. That's today. For context, here is how those numbers compare to the operating cost alone for coal and gas power plants. In other words, today, in 2020, it is already cheaper in sunny places like California to build a new solar power plant than to keep operating an old coal or gas plant. And solar plus batteries is not far off. By 2030, it's no contest at all. At those prices, nothing else can compete. And here's one other thing to consider about cost. Transmitting electricity is not free. In fact, it's getting more expensive every year. Now, you can't put a coal or a gas power plant on the roof of your home or business, but you can sure put solar panels up there. And by the late 2020s, there will be many situations where generation on demand, on site, is cheaper than the cost of transmission alone. That means that even if generating electricity at a coal or gas power plant were somehow magically free, rooftop solar would still be cheaper. We call this God parity, and it's coming. As their costs continue to improve, the adoption of solar, wind, and batteries is growing exponentially. Each of these technologies shows a beautifully consistent exponential curve. And this means that we're not facing a slow energy transition. We are facing a rapid and total energy transformation, and it has already begun. Now, conventional forecasts get disruption wrong. Major industry forecasts have made simple linear projections for the growth of solar, for example, year after year for 20 years now. And at the same time that disruption creates a new system, it also wipes out the old system. And this is not theoretical. This has already begun with coal in the United States. Year after year, these same industry forecasts have been desperately trying to save coal from collapse with wishful thinking. But coal in the United States has already been disrupted, first by fracking and now by solar and wind. So we have a disruptive technology convergence. The cost of these technologies are now so low that incumbents simply cannot compete. And that means that the disruption is inevitable. This particular disruption, the clean disruption of the energy sector, has already begun. And existing coal, gas, nuclear, and other assets will be stranded. No new investment in those technologies is rational from this point forward. So here's the trillion dollar question, not just for the United States, but for the entire planet. Is 100% solar, wind, and batteries possible by 2030? To answer that question, we took real-world data for solar and wind power generation and built a systems dynamics model to determine exactly how much battery energy storage would need to go with it in order to meet 100% of electricity demand, all day, all night, all year round. We analyzed California, Texas, and New England as case studies, and we ran thousands of scenarios for each region. And what we found is that there are hundreds of different combinations of solar, wind, and batteries that could do the job. Yes, even in New England. Now, it's a balancing act. We can either build more solar panels so that we generate enough power even on short, cloudy winter days, or we can build bigger batteries to charge up ahead of time. But these combinations are not all equal. Some of them are much more expensive than others. So we then asked the next obvious question. What is the most cost-effective system? We discovered that the key to understanding how 100% solar, wind, and batteries is both achievable and affordable by 2030 is what we call the clean energy U-curve. 
The clean energy U-curve shows us that there is a cost-optimal combination of generating capacity and battery capacity, a sweet spot. And for each region, it varies with climate and geography. But what is so surprising is where the sweet spot is located. It turns out that the optimal system will have between three and five times more total generating capacity than today's grid. Because with that much solar and wind, you only need 40 to 90 hours worth of batteries, and it's the batteries that are so expensive. Now, conventional forecasts have never even considered building 3x to 4x to 5x solar and wind capacity. But understanding disruption means rethinking the boundaries of the existing system. And the clean energy U-curve shows us that the least expensive combination of solar, wind, and batteries, these three technologies, is getting cheaper by the minute. And that's why this isn't just the cleanest system in 2030, it's why it's also the cheapest system that we can build. Okay, so what would this actually cost? Well, our analysis shows that if we start building now, California can have a 100% solar, wind, and battery system by 2030 for a total investment cost of $115 billion. Texas for $197 billion, and New England for $91 billion. Extrapolating this to the rest of the country, the total cost would be less than $2 trillion. That's $200 billion per year for 10 years. That's 1% of GDP for 100% clean energy by 2030. But there's more to this story than just a surprisingly affordable price tag. It turns out that 100% solar, wind, and batteries is just the beginning. This new system has a completely different architecture than the old one, so it works in very different ways. And perhaps the most counterintuitive aspect of this is that the new system produces much more electricity overall. So when we build a system based on solar and wind power, we have to design it to get through the worst times of year, those cloudy weeks during winter when the days are shortest. But by doing so, we naturally end up with the capacity to generate much more electricity on most of the other days of the year. And remember, this is still the cheapest electricity system that we can build. And we call this unexpected benefit of 100% solar, wind, and battery systems super power. Its implications are simply stunning. To start with, the sheer scale of superpower is enormous. In sunny regions like California and Texas, clean energy superpower output is greater than the total electricity demand today. And this pattern is consistent with other disruptions, where the new system is much larger than the old one that it replaces, like cars disrupting horses or smartphones disrupting film cameras. And what's more, clean energy superpower is not just available once in a while, it's available all throughout the year. Even here in New England, superpower will be available on two-thirds of all of the days of the year, and in sunnier regions, over 90% of all days. Now, because this superpower is coming primarily from the sun, it doesn't cost anything. There's no fuel. There's no additional wear and tear on the equipment. If the sun is shining, solar panels just sit there and happily make electricity, and that means the marginal cost of clean energy superpower is effectively zero. So, just imagine what society could do with a huge amount of clean energy that is available almost every day and is essentially free. Well, the sky's the limit. That's enough energy to meet all of our water needs with treatment and desalination, for example. Or it's enough energy to electrify all of road transportation with plenty to spare. Or it's enough to replace fossil fuels in all residential and commercial heating. Or it could be used in recycling and waste processing or smelting or for the manufacturing of solar panels and wind turbines and batteries themselves right here in the United States, which of course would lower their costs even further. This super abundance of clean, ultra cheap energy will be transformative, socially, economically, and of course, environmentally. It will make communities healthier, it will create millions of jobs, and it will help mitigate climate change. Up until now, we've been right to conserve energy, to use as little as possible because of its harmful side effects associated with fossil fuels. But the new system architecture is not based on extraction of depletable resources. Conservation means the opposite in the new system. It's not harmful to use sunshine and wind, it's harmful to let them go to waste. 100% solar, wind, and batteries doesn't just clean up electricity either. Thanks to all of that superpower, we can eliminate virtually all fossil fuel use and the emissions that come with it by 2030. So what do we need to do to make this happen. Well, what we don't need 
or subsidies in carbon taxes, any more than digital cameras needed them to wipe out celluloid film. The disruption is already inevitable. What we need is leadership. We need communities and policymakers and entrepreneurs and investors to understand the future of energy and to act on this information by making the right choices today. Thank you.